To little cuters of Trek on screen, first contact. I, uh, we are your hosts, Gavin Scalhorn. I'm Dave Puck. My co host, there he That's is. That's me. Now we're, we look more like co hosts now. And, and we have our guest down here more centered than he was a moment more than he was a moment ago. Guest, actor, podcaster, father. Filmmaker, friend of the show, Michael Chan. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome. Thank you. Thank oh. you uh, for having me on the show. I'm like super excited to be here. Oh, so, love what you guys do. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. We're really excited to have you. Well, this I know that you've met Gavin before, so uh, you know yes. it's uh, it's my first time meeting you, and it's it's a pl been a pleasure so far, even just in the sort of pre moments of the show. Um, so you you've transitioned into acting over a number of years, and you're you're doing a lot on screen now. Mm -hmm. um, What's it like moving into a franchise like Star Trek? Um, it's 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 my, it's a dream come true. It's the best way and the only way I can really describe this. Um, it's surreal. I, I just I still can't believe it's happening. You know. Um, so yeah it's it's the it's the best feeling in the world especially when this was my big goal once you know they announced that they were filming discovery in toronto uh this was it this was my acting goal you know and now that i've achieved it it's it's just uh it's both an amazing feeling and it's a relief you know because oh. <laughs> now i can focus on other stuff too <laughs> Oh, okay. I was gonna say, can you say more about that? That's a really interesting yeah. statement to make. Yeah. Now that's a good uh, warm-up question to this question. How does it feel to be on Locutors of Trek? See, see, this uh, <laughs> with being in Star Trek, it, it opens up a world of 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 things I can actually show up in. And since this is one of the ones I really want to show up in, it's uh, feels amazing. So again, thank you. Uh, Although, Davin, man, your energy. What's going on, man? Usually you're like up here. <laughs> oh, I'll get there. Don't worry. Okay. Like okay. Do I, have to, do I have to heat you up, buddy? <laughs> oh, get well, you get a good dad joke for me. Might help. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll warm up. Don't worry, I'm putting you on the spot like that. Dave. I have to. No, no. Joke. I see. I'm no, debating I'm how dirty <laughs> of, of a dad joke. Uh, I I should be going. With it. Oh well, there's there's no censorship in, in Starfleet, so don't worry about that. Uh, what did one ice cream say to the other ice cream? Lick me until ice cream. Now that's that's how dirty we're going I've for that. Michael Chan here today. Oh my gosh, we're starting to talk in about the very gutter. It's there you go. <laughs> there you are, Devin. The Devin I know. <laughs> Cheers to that. Oh, Kapla. There we go. <laughs> my microphone was really far away. How do I sound now? Oh, you uh, sound way better. You, you sound great, and I can uh, hear all you hear your very sexy voice, which oh, I, wow. I love very much. We're nice getting right into it. Here. Both of you have really nice. sexy voices and nice, 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 you know, facial hair, which I cannot grow. Well, I have stories and acting about how uh, about about how like they want facial hair on me. It's this is not happening. Ah, right on. You know, you know uh, makeup department can do amazing things these days. 
They can, they, they can, <laughs> uh, unless you're 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 trying to like mess around with Henry Cavill's face. That's true. Well, uh, <laughs> see, I don't think CGI is the way yeah. to go in that situation. No, no, it's not. No, no. <laughs> it's just uh, it's my spirit <laughs> gum and fun fur, you know. I'm no they, professional. Um, but, uh, so I'm I'm in a board game, uh, uh, Z Apocalypse Two, okay. Defender Burbs, and uh, so if you if you have that game, I'm actually one of the the survivors you can find, and I have a card, and it was great because Sweet. when they drew me, I gave them a, you know a photo of me, uh -huh. no facial hair. What they gave me was a giant beard. I'm like, in no conceivable post-apocalyptic universe will I ever have that beard. <laughs> you see, like I'm one of those Asians with like I have to grow facial hair for at least 50 years before I can have what you guys have. So so I'd be like really old in that universe. So anyways, but it was nice seeing what I would look like with a beard. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was it was, it was cool. I you I remind me of my, my, my... <laughs> I was gonna say you remind me of my favorite story related to my own beard that way. Years and years and years ago, when it was it probably would have been 99, 2000 ish, I was going to University in Halifax and then I would go back to Prince Edward Island and work actually at Anna Green Gables house on the North Shore as a guide in the summer. Mm -hmm. So uh that's what One they call the like corner different. stores in PEI. <laughs> no, it's it's called National Heritage Place because it can't be called a historic site because, you know, and um, but, not real. Uh, <laughs> so at one, I decided to shave my beard off before I went to work one summer, and we're going off to do our like refresher on like CPR and things. And my boss looks at me. He's like, "Dave, what what did you do to your beard?" You, do you think you can grow it back? I was like, oh, yeah, we got a couple weeks. That's fine. I'll, I'll come back with it. He's like, you're kidding. And so two weeks later, I walk back onto the site for my first day, and Doug walks up, and I've got the same beard I've got now, basically. And in the same period of time, he's managed this little soul patch down here. He walked by. He's like, I friggin' hate you. He just kept right on going to his car. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, we have to curate the, the facial hair over here. See, I always tell people, if you see a me with a beard, you know it's a doppelganger. Kill him. True. That guy's from it's the mirror universe. Immediately. Like <laughs> some, yeah. Someone will see in Discovery Season 5, Mirror Universe, Michael Chan, and he will be fully bearded. I I mean, that would be, that would be amazing if they, uh, <laughs> they wanted to bring me back. Well, let's get to, let's get to that, actually. Uh, well, first, sure. because we know you're a Star Trek fan. Um, who is your favorite series, character, and movie of the Star Trek franchise? In Star Trek, like the entire universe, or in yeah. specific? Ooh, that's hard. Right. Wow. We'll say you can't pick yourself. <laughs> I'm not my favorite. I, I actually am not my favorite. Uh, it's hard, because like, growing up, it was usually Sulu. Okay. But Saru has really just he's up there. Like I, I can't decide anymore. Saru is an amazing character. Um, and I just I love him. So it's like between Saru and Sulu. Right on. It's because the names are so similar. Yeah, yeah, could be it. <laughs> <laughs> They're both minorities. <laughs> well, sure. Well, I was going to ask you, what are the qualities <laughs> in Saru, or Saru, that draw you to him as a character? I was just, it's his heart, you know. It, yeah. I, I feel like him and Tilly are the hearts of the show, and you know, he's just so he's a good cross between like amazing leadership, amazing compassion, yeah. and just a real like person. I know he's 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 an alien, but you know, I can really relate to him. Right, you know he's he's got, um, and you know one of the things I really appreciate about Saru as a character, particularly is is Doug Jones's capacity for movement. You know, mm -hmm. I think the first place he really captivated me was Pan's Labyrinth, of course, uh, yes. but his his ability to. Uh, 
make his own body convincingly uh, so other than what we would expect of human motion uh, mm -hmm. is just captivating, I find, you know? Yeah. And I love just the, the hand sway in the back. Like, mm. you watch other actors attempt to do that, you know? Like, like when they're at Kavanaugh or whatever. None of them can do it the way he does. Uh, but then again, you could argue, like, you know, everyone's an individual, so their sways would be a little different but still it's just there's some there's a level of grace to the way he oh, does yeah. it that's just absolutely beautiful to watch mm. yeah, yeah he's like yeah. a ballerina <laughs> yeah 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 the, the, it was it was great uh because i i saw him i didn't get to talk to him but i i saw him walk by on set i was like oh my god it's so cool it's doug judge in full makeup like and it looks oh, right on. in real life like it looks so good in real life. Well, talk about a surreal moment. I can only imagine seeing it come up with the uniform and the makeup and everything, right? That's got to be... Yeah, no, it was... Uh, overwhelming it was, in some respects. Yeah. Mind you, not in full uniform. Since it was outdoors, he would he was in, 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 a, uh, in, in, in a bathrobe. Same ah. as the rest of us. <laughs> in a bathrobe. Do you want to so go they, into that? <laughs> oh, come on, you said bathrobe. Now we have to go into. Okay, that. so so let me ask you guys: What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think the uniform works? My uniform. I assume you know uh, you put your pants on one leg at a time, like everybody else. I I'm gonna guess Velcro on the front there, maybe, uh, but. I haven't got a good enough look at the, the pants because there's not really a lot of visible clasps or anything, it doesn't seem. Well, yeah, it's it's very smooth. It's seamless. Very um, Star Trek that way. Exactly. So um, Paint, trying not to give away too on. much here. I'm wearing, underneath it, I'm wearing a thong. Oh. Oh, my. With a bodysuit that has an opening in the crotch area that's skin tight. Uh, my pants are Velcro to that. And, Velcro to that. Yeah. And then the blazer uh, has to be, because we don't want to get it wrinkled, uh, has to be taken off anytime I'm offset. So it's cold. Uh, that's why we wear bathrobes everywhere. Wow. With your like skin tight suit on underneath. Oh, yeah. No, oh. It, it, it's sexy. It's really sexy. But what, it, but if if I'm Come. if I understand you rightly, <laughs> you've got a bathrobe and tearaway pants, and I'm, then they give you. I mean, they're top. pretty tight. They still like. I mean, I'm, I have to put the pants on, and then the waistband is velcroed to my. Oh, my I see. I thought you meant they were like. No, 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 no not like velcro, but like these, I don't have a belt. These I don't are magic have, pants. Like it's not really elasticy, so they have to keep it up somehow. Okay. Because you don't want seams okay. or anything, right? You know. Want... Yeah. Yeah. Or muffin topping. <laughs> Which I, I totally you know what? Like in that thong, I was nearly doing that, you know. Wow. I Not to brag, but you know, it was a tight... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so uh where your character works on Discovery, is that like the command center? Is that what you call that? Like the command center? It's the Federation headquarters and it yeah, is Federation a starbase slash ship. It's a starbase that can go into warp. Uh yeah. I am part of the bridge crew and I am the operations slash communications officer. Lieutenant Michael Chain. And I am a lieutenant, yes, junior grade. But we did, we had no name. Is that correct? Correct. Not yet. I hope okay. they will give me a okay. name one day. I, considering oh, I have a bit of a bone to pick with Discovery, there, I think. I think <laughs> on any of the other there's two of us have a name. They name everybody. <laughs> oh sure. So I, I don't know if you noticed. There's two of us that show up twice. It's myself yeah. and the security officer, played by Emmanuel John, and. Mm -hmm. uh, Manuel's, uh, mind you, he's he's a fantastic actor. Like he's just absolutely wonderful. And we keep joking, like you know, you have uh, uh, Reese and and Bryce on Discovery, the Asian mm -hmm. and 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 the black best friends. So Emmanuel and I were like, yeah, we're 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 the Reese and Bryce of the bridge crew on the Federation headquarters. Yeah, that's right. We're <laughs> we're the best friends, and we're we're, we're current we're characters. HQ. We don't we don't. <laughs> 
we don't like we want names, but we also want our own spin-off series. We want our oh, own spin-off it. series that's like a comedy. So like we always get in trouble with Admiral Vance. Like one episode, we want to play like uh, a beam tag because you know you have, in the future you have these 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 uh, uh, like we could just instantaneously beam anywhere, right? Like our badges beam us everywhere. It's like stop, no, no more of the right. So we're like we we're gonna do like the the Nightcrawler poof bamf <laughs> tag all over the all over the HQ. And it'll be like, it'll escalate. And Vance will like, Sky says, stop it. But then it'll end with him actually joining in. Ooh. I was going to say, Vance is like your uh, Mr. Slate. He's just like, Flintstone. But he's like after you guys. Man. <laughs> yeah. Make it happen, CBS. Make it yeah, happen. Make, all, it's going to be a we hit. All want. The one we deserve. <laughs> it's true. Man, this is the new era of Star Trek. Speaking about um, where where you are on the headquarters ship, mm-hmm. I was looking through uh, I think a scene from your second appearance. That's episode thirteen of season four, mm-hmm. and just before we see you, right when uh, sort of Vance is coming up across and asking you a question, we hear a voiceover on the loudspeaker over Tilly. That's that correct. wasn't your voice, was it? Because it sounded an awful lot like you. It is me, yes. It is you. Okay. I make two That's announcements in that episode. Yeah. Mm. Right on. It was Good part of my job. Good catch. Right on. But he does. He's calling off the set. Nice consistency. Yeah. Uh, so that set is pretty fancy and flashy. How much of that is real? And how much of that is added in post? Like, uh, a, a lot of it's real. <laughs> Yeah. They built an entire bridge that uh, with pieces that could be moved around for the to represent the different levels. Because if you've seen like the uh, the episodes where they show the voting, so mm-hmm. you have like the it, it's pretty deep, right? So yeah, there's like a lot of green screening and editing and all that, but it's always the same deck. Uh, but that's and real. Like, so it's sort of a like movable stage. Like, Pardon me. On one of those like holographic screens. You know, the the That's screens themselves. There. So the holog obviously the holographic parts are are yeah. are CG'd, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but our panels are real, and they have these cool uh, the consoles on it that's like lights up and everything with uh, LEDs and, uh, and and screens as well. So it, it's really helpful to have those things so that we know what to do. Um, sure. But yeah, like a lot of it is real. A lot of it is actually practical, and that actually includes, especially like the explosion stuff. Those are all practical as well. Oh, really? Yep. All right. Yeah, on. I think I think the spinoff potentials there because you seem to be Admiral Vance's right hand guy, as far as I can tell. Uh, I, I, I guess. guess. <laughs> well, you know, I guess he needs something done. He sends you come jogging in. He's like, "Hey, man, here's my guy." Go get yeah, I, I, guy. I get the jogging shot. Exactly, with the hair that flops because they the hairstylist at the stylist actually made sure my hair flopped properly. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but they could have just gelled it down so it didn't flop at all. Mm-hmm. But then I'd look like an action figure, so they're like, "Yeah, let's make it flop." So it's like wow. properly, a lot of details. Little like that's the thing about this show. There are all these tiny tiny details that people really don't think about and but your brain picks up that adds to the mm-hmm. realism of it you know and yet they couldn't Minus. name two characters that deserve names well you know we have to earn <laughs> we have to earn i that. guess so just like we have to <laughs> lieutenants earn don't our, get our, names only lieutenants not yet names. not yet that's <laughs> uh, pretty funny oh man oh here's an audience question oh uh, for Michael Chan. Have you ever heard of Super Mater Brothers? Wow. Yeah. Aren't they like these super amazing podcasters? Like some of the best out there. You know, I, 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 I I've never heard of them. I, I, I don't know. Really? That's, well, that's, <laughs> a, shame, that's a shame. Like, <laughs> they're no, no, so I hear, good. I hear like, great you know, it, to be 
to be on one of their shows is yeah. like is like the holy grail. Well, you start here, and then eventually you, you can. Well, yeah, you, you move your way up to the to the Super Mater Brothers, the big leagues, as it were. The big leagues, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. What just happened? It's what? A, yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody nice. hacking my feed here? Doors. Uh, is that is that mad? I don't know. Are we getting spam ads know. on this show? Can get paid for it. Capitalism <laughs> on a Star Trek <laughs> podcast. This is heresy. So, what was it like uh, working with Oded Fair? We all saw the mummy and <coughs> saw how attractive he was in that movie. <laughs> um. Oh God, I love like I. He was one of my idols growing up. He's one of my acting idols as well. And uh, working with him was was fantastic. He is he's just such a great guy. You know, he's sweet. Uh, he's a great dad, great parent, um, great husband. You know, he he goes into like the Discovery Bridge to take calls from his family. He's great, and like you know, like I, I took I was going through stuff last year. Uh, like with my mom having cancer and then dying and all that. And he was there for me. Um, yeah, he's just, he's a sweetheart and a class act. You know, he's, he's a, a, a very good set leader, set dad. So it was just phenomenal working with him. And just to even to get a glimpse of his process was amazing for me because, you know, I, I can study his on screen acting all I want, right? There's something to be said to, to see him backstage and then transition from backstage to, you know, in front of the camera. And that's, it's a lesson in and of itself. So I, I learned a lot. Well, I was, I was going to ask you about that. Um, what's it like to act opposite that kind of a, a very practiced, very experienced uh, presence? uh on stage with you it's what um is, yeah so so the thing about about the way i work is like uh because i like i've been doing this for 16 years mm -hmm. um you know I'm, I'm not i'm not new i don't really get starstruck or anything mm -hmm. uh and i do recognize that you know obviously there will always be people who are who are who are much more experienced and, and much better at this than I am people that I want to learn from. Um, the experience of working with them is phenomenal because it's like, even though like we're, we're actually being filmed, right? This is, this mm -hmm. is going to be put out there. It's like, I'm, I'm in class again, you know, <laughs> I'm like literally, in, in, and I don't say a lot. Don't get me wrong, I don't say a, a lot, but I could feel myself improving <laughs> just because when you have someone like that who who who's so present, no is just in the moment and just like giving me so much to work with, an overwhelming mm -hmm. amount of to work with, even with just simple lines. Um, it just then allows me to to draw from that and then bring out stuff for my character from for me to play with that and then to give back you know right so when you have cal like super high caliber actors like that it's just literally my acting it steps up you know and it's actually it's not just it's one of the things about onset experience right you can you can go to to to, to take classes workshops all you want but there is something to be said to actually be on a real set working with professionals who, especially ones who've done this so much more than you because that is will push you to the next level and he i will say definitely helped push me in what minimal amount of time i got to spend and push me to the next level because now i feel i'm much more confident uh to be able to work in in a set of this caliber and and succeed and you know and i'm sure that over time I'll, I'll get you know similar type roles and then move up from there and i'll just get more and more comfortable and more able to to give right hmm. yeah it's, yes, it's we'll one of the character as well down the line pardon me <laughs> like you know in 20 years from now we'll see you like admiral lieutenant michael chain 
<laughs> you know, I, I keep joking that they should just name my character uh, Kim, like Lieutenant Kim. <laughs> To, oh, to, to kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg. like I'm an ancestor. I mean, sorry, I'm, he's my that. That. I'm a descendant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like his great, 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 great grandfather. Great, great, great. Yeah, because be that great. would be amazing. Yeah. Since I love Garrett Wang and I love Harry Kim and and yeah, so if they did that, it would be great. <laughs> but it's like also kind of throwing a little shade his way. <laughs> Unless you want to mess with people and, and also call me Reese. So he he knocked up a girl. <laughs> Didn't know, jumped to the future, and now, <laughs> and now I am. I'm kidding. Patrick's gonna be like, what the hell? <laughs> That's right. Um, so, is it true, Mike, Michael Chan, that you can be the only Asian on Locutors of Trek? I mean, at this moment in time, I am. Okay. I'm a minority even here <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> Those of you it's may true. not know, that's not as weird a question as it may sound. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could explain why before they all hate me and turn this off. No, I won't. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, I set myself hate you. up. I Just knew it. I knew it. You set yourself, yourself up, buddy. <laughs> I was throwing that out there. I was sending the pitch, you know, down the plate. All right, guys, bring the torches, bring the pitchforks. Oh, you know, you took the risk. monster is right there in the windmill. <laughs> Let's go burn them. <laughs> um, um, no, the, moving on. I'll, I'll save you now. I'll save okay. you. Oh, I'll, be your, I'll be your Frankenstein's monster's wife. There you go. I'll <laughs> save you. Uh, um, Frankenstein's monster's wife. Yes. Indeed. There you go. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Um, <laughs> Did she say that? That's not how I remember. That. No. no <laughs> Although I imagine behind the scenes, maybe. I don't know. Uh, that's in a uh, bit of a parody version of it, probably. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That oh, was the Abbott and Costello whole, one. whole new monsters. But, anyways, uh... <laughs> there's oh, a short Lord. film that I was referencing. Yes, it, it, we are talking about a short film. <laughs> Short film that I produced, uh, wrote, directed, and produced an act in called The Only Asian. Yes, um, it is the second film I have ever made. Um, and it is the reason why I'm now a filmmaker as well as an actor and podcaster. And uh, it's done really well. I, I made it uh, back in 2020 um, mm -hmm. after I had made a short film called Switch with my buddy uh, Timothy Ng for a film festival, uh, like a pandemic film festival. We, we did it for fun because like the industry was shut down and it was like, what, what can we do? There's nothing to do and we need to be creative. We need to stay creative. So like this festival popped up and we're like, yeah, yeah, let's let's make something and enter. And, and that got me like thinking like, what else can I do? So like I was on set so the industry opened back up a little and I was on set of a commercial and I was sitting there at lunch and uh, had just been like the day before I had been talking to a friend who lost their agent uh, during the pandemic and, and they were having a lot of difficulties finding a new one. And that reminded me of my own struggles and other people who look like me and our struggles. And um, I don't know, I just wrote a short film over lunch that became the only agent. Pardon? Oh, yeah. I just realized what you said. Thank you, Daddy. Um, <laughs> but yes. Gonna earn my title. Us, us handsome people are a minority. <laughs> Don't tell I me about know. it. <laughs> um, <laughs> preaching to the choir. <laughs> uh, you better be careful. You're like digging a hole. <laughs> oh man, wait do we get to uh yeah, so you thought I started off slow. We're, we'll get there. Uh, we'll we're, just we're send it to warp speed. <laughs> Can't wait to hit warp 10. Or are we gonna spore jump? But no, seriously. Uh, <laughs> uh so yeah, I, I wrote The Only Asian and immediately uh called up my best friend Katisha Shaw and my good friend Ginny Wong. I was like, okay, you, you guys want to be in this? And I sent them the script, They're like, oh my god, yes. Uh, so we all filmed on our cell phones. 
<laughs> and, and it's like a Zoom movie. It's like a Zoom meeting because it's a pandemic movie. And it's about oh. two Asian actors who end up in the same agency. And even though I'm a man and she's a woman and I have short hair and she has long hair and I'm six feet tall and she's like five foot two, uh, they think we look alike. So we have to kind of, you know, duke it out, <laughs> see who's the only Asian. Um, and to all of our surprise, uh, for surprises, surprise, whatever, <laughs> um, this film went on to not only get selected like a, a lot at film festivals, um, it won like a ton of awards, including best short film multiple times. And what's even crazier won me a uh a best actor award. wow yeah and then and then oh, as a great send-off it was uh played at the chinese theater in hollywood back in march which wow. blows blows my mind by the way and this is a milestone i do need to mention this uh mm -hmm. katisha shaw again my best friend katisha shaw uh wrote and produced and directed and acted in a film called hinterland election night mm -hmm. which was like a parody uh like a, a comedy about the u.s election and okay. i'm in that <laughs> i have a very short appearance in that and that film hinterland has also done incredibly well at festivals um and that film was also screened <laughs> at the same festival uh at the uh, Chinese theater. So both Katisha and I had our faces screened twice this year in March at the Chinese theater, which is just wow. By the way, Katisha yes. Shaw, remember Katisha Shaw's name. She is literally the, she's the best actor I know, and she's going to be huge. Hmm. So one day she's going to be on your show. Right on. And if people want to find the films, I know uh, the only Asian is on Vimeo, right? You can find it there. Uh, uh, so you if you go to my website, michaelchan.ca, I finally uploaded it onto okay. my, my demo. I, I call it the demo section because my demo reels are there, but I also have that film there. So, okay. uh, yep, michaelchan.ca. Uh, Hinterland, I don't... I'm going to have to ask Katisha to see where, where it's... Because I don't know if it's available to watch publicly right now. Okay. Um, but yeah, the only Asian is definitely available on my website. Right on. Right you know, on. Dave, uh, you may not know this actually, but um, I may not. I'm, 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 I rub elbows with the admirals and the lieutenants over there at, at, at uh, HQ. In fact, I got a personal birthday message from uh, Lieutenant Michael Chan and Admiral Vance. What? <laughs> On my birthday. Do you do you not oh, remember wow. all this? I, I think I might play it for everybody. Maybe my it's doppelganger funny. made it? I don't know. Here we go. This is Lieutenant Chan. I am sending this through the Temporal Interstellar Telegraph Service, also known as TITS. <laughs> Commander Davin. On behalf of the Federation, Admiral Vance, and myself, we wish you a very happy birthday. Live long and prosper. <laughs> See, many of you may not know this. I actually outrank Lieutenant Michael Chan. Commander. Oh, you, you do. You do. And, uh, I mean, <laughs> Lieutenant isn't very high up. Tell that to Harry Kim. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Dave did him dirty. He has a name, he's a main character, and he's lower ranked than I am. That's true. If people get promoted all around him. Oh, Lord. Like, oh, even two two off. Point, two off. <laughs> what do you see, Mr. Kim? It's something! You'll have to do better than that. I'm telling you, if yeah. they don't promote my character as well as Emmanuel's character by next season, it's it's a tragedy. Or at least because, because, seriously, if you watch season four, we deserve a promotion. Yeah, working hard over there at HQ. Oh yeah, I think yeah, especially with everything that happened since season four. I'm not going to spoil it for everyone. Go watch it. The whole thing is there on Paramount Plus for you to stream and binge. It's a great season. The, and that was the name or not? Name or not? 
name or not, now that you're on Memory <laughs> Alpha, you could pretty much show up anywhere, you know, in the Trek universe. You could show up in I... one of those games. Your character could, you know, you never know. You're out there yeah. now. You're in the Star Well, Trek apparently theater. somebody we know created mm. uh, me in, in Star Trek Online and has me following them around doing... Wow. And, uh, I thought... How does I was that keep... That What's here? going on here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why does that keep popping up? I, mean, I thought this was a Star Trek thing, not a, a Super Mario Nintendo thing. Me too. It's true. I don't even think they used that logo yet. I think I'm the only one who uses it. <laughs> That's what but I yeah, apparently I'm running around following some crazy captain. <laughs> oh, really? Doing I mean, that horrible do things. And, but I'm a Klingon. You know, you are? Yeah, he nice. created me and I'm a Klingon uh, dead end of like House Skullhorn. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Nice. I imagine I'm his wingman, so like anytime he wants to go bang an Orion or something, I'll be there like this guy's awesome. <laughs> right over there. Super I'm just a dwarf. Considered quite humorous on Star Trek Online, I'll have you know. <laughs> I'm sure. Why don't you tell sure us a little you about your sixteen year mission to be on Star Trek? Oh boy. Uh well it wasn't a sixteen year mission. Um well, okay, I'll 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 start year mission. as as far back as I can. But basically, I tell uh, me about six month old Michael. Six month old Michael Chan uh, drooled a lot, smiled a lot, and was naked a lot. There you go. Come You're not on. alone, Gus. You hear that? That's right. <laughs> uh, six month old Michael Chan loved his parents very much. Good, good. Yep. And 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 yeah. And then six year old Michael Chan uh spoke very little English, spoke Cantonese, wow. and then ten year old Michael Chan spoke English with a Chinese accent. Mm. Okay. Thirteen year old Michael Chan had half an accent. Mm. Um twenty uh twenty-three year old Michael Chan had no accent except uh my ths were pronounced as d's for certain words and that was corrected out of me in film school wow um yeah because it was a but i'm born here i'm born in canada so it's part of the whole diverse upbringing thing but anyways um right. i i was never into drama mm -hmm. i uh was actually into music growing up i uh I made it to grade nine in piano. I right played the alto saxophone. Uh, nice. I tried to sing, but I'm a terrible singer. And I was uh, in high school. I was in band. I was not in drama. And uh, yeah, yeah, like I, I won awards for that. I trained uh, some of the sax players to, to go to Kiwanis with the rest of the band. And, and they won. Um, like it was at no point did I ever think, they even consider acting now mind you i watched movies with my parents I, every weekend we would go to the theater and watch something so uh and then prior to that prior to watching a lot of western films like my parents showed me a lot of uh hong kong films so that's what i grew up with um so i was going to become a doctor i uh went to the university of toronto to study mm -hmm. Uh, science and then that became a double major in human biology and sociology sociology focusing on the uh, ethics of medicine as well as uh, uh, cultural sociology and how uh, different cultures interact with society over here in the west oh, fascinating. Uh, mm -hmm. and i actually finished my degree i actually have a bachelor's of science uh, in human biology i got to choose they asked me if i wanted you know my bachelor's to be uh, for sociology or science. And I was like, science. Um, but in third year of university, I, uh, I had some friends who were like, uh, they were making a student video game because they were in like the gaming program. Uh, and they're like, Michael, we always hear you doing stupid voices, like really stupid voices. Do you want to do some of them for our game? And I'm like, sure, why not? And I don't know, it just 
when I did it, it's something awakened in me. As I as I keep telling people, uh, I was bitten by a radioactive acting bug and was transformed <laughs> into your friendly neighborhood thespian. That's what happened. <laughs> Because I went well, from I doing lose musical abilities because we could cancel the interview jam. <laughs> I haven't touched a piano in over a decade, and I haven't touched a saxophone in twenty years. So, oh my, wow, yeah. Instead, I sing terrible karaoke. I occasionally, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, went on Twitch and sang parody songs using my daughter's cat piano. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so so that's the extent of my music nowadays. Although I I did try to learn a ukulele, you know, like everybody else during the beginning of the pandemic, I tried to take on a new hobby, and I can still only play four notes and and and, and play "You Are My Sunshine." Okay, um, but, one song, you know, yeah, it's a great song. But, but it sounds like so this is a pretty complete reorientation of the creative. Oh life. Lord, here we go. Oh wow, well, motor tune. You are my starship, my pretty starship. <laughs> you like when I'm in you on one of your consoles. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> that song's taking a left turn fairly quickly. Um, <laughs> my brain's <laughs> always in the gutter. This is terrible. I'm not <laughs> representing myself well as <laughs> at all. Sixteen years. Wow, this is what I've become. Yeah. Uh, so, so I I did that. So I started doing parodies uh, in university and annoyed the hell out of my dorm neighbors because I kept doing stupid voices and recording them and making fun of anime and movies and stuff. And a lot of my jokes were really really dirty. Uh, and then I would put them online and people listened to those. And I actually got pretty pretty big on multiple different webs like anime websites of my parodies back then hmm. uh i also created something called Yu-Gi-Oh in a nutshell where i voiced every single character and basically did a synopsis of the first two seasons uh each of them in base like around two minutes uh which Ooh. which i remember like i did that for a while and then, uh uh was it Yu-Gi-Oh abridged came out it was like Dude, what the heck? But oh. <laughs> Those guys are awesome. <laughs> they're amazing. I was like, you guys stole what? You guys are my fans. But no, they're they're amazing. I, I had no time for that. Um, but yeah, no, I fell in love with acting. And I talked to my parents about it. I was like, uh, I might have, I'm having problems. I, I, I know I'm pre-med. I'm in part of the pre-med society. And I have all this stuff going in, you know, getting me ready for, for med school. But I kind of like this acting thing <laughs> so they're like okay graduate of your degree you can do take your MCAT. You can do both also, they could make you a medical office they could they, they could there's a reason why by the way i play doctors a lot uh, as well as dads mm -hmm. obviously but i play doctors because i can actually uh you know do say everything and properly stuff. and i already know <laughs> how to be one um but yeah like my parents are like take your mcat uh, mcat sorry also take your lsat Take sure. just take everything. I took every test. Like I, 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 I have the thing. Like I even got like offers from law schools to go to law. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I, like I did all these things for my parents, and then I got my real estate license because my dad's a realtor. And he's like, it's in the, it's in our blood. So you need to have a practical job, just in case, right? Because acting is difficult. My dad actually, when he was young, uh, tried his hand at acting. He acted in oh, really? university, um, won won some awards for that, but then you know it, it didn't pan out for him. Uh, my mom uh, wanted to be a go-go dancer when she was younger, and that didn't work out for her either. So yeah. the arts never really worked out for my parents. So it was the right thing to push me to do, right? Uh, but once I, I completed all that, they supported me i went to film school and then from there i started doing theater um as well as a lot of background work because uh one of the things i realized very quickly in film school was experience on a real set is extremely important because just by observing you can learn and so as a background actor sure i was doing stuff of walking around running around getting blown up and stuff but while you know in between stuff i watch i observe and i learn and i've networked and 
from from all of that, I started to I found myself an agent. Uh, the first one was bad, and the second one was pretty good for a while. And I started auditioning for stuff. So I, I had a mix of commercials, small TV roles, and I also did like short films, student films, all stuff like that, and just worked my way up. And like around 10 years ago, I joined a union, uh, Actra. Right on. And then I could just. Hey, that's worked. Dave, a union man. I am a I union man. man. A hero. Um, but yeah, like I didn't. I don't know when I when I when I when I joined a union, or even when I became an actor, my goals were never big, right? I I just love acting. I love the art. It's my passion. It's it's the thing that fills my soul. So I didn't care if my roles are big or small or what show I was in or what commercial I was. Doing. I didn't care. I just wanted to work. I just wanted to be on set as much as possible. But then. You know, a few years ago, they announced that Star Trek Discovery was filming in Toronto. And that, like, changed everything. Because I was like, wait, th th I I've been a, a Star Trek fan since forever. Like, my mom introduced me to Star Trek. I don't even know at what age. All I knew was my mom thought William Shatner, she had a crush on William Shatner, thought Captain Kirk was just so gorgeous, and introduced me to Star Trek. That's the first sci-fi anything I ever uh, I ever, I ever, you know, loved and uh, was exposed to, and I wanted to be a Starfleet officer my entire childhood. And for Discovery to be in Toronto, I was like, "Geez, okay." So I went to my agents. I was like, "Okay, all right." I know I told you that I don't have lofty goals. I just want to work. Uh, yeah, ch scrap that. I want, I want Trek. That's my goal. And they're like, uh, it's going to be hard, Michael. Like, we believe in you. You're really good. But it's going to be hard. And you're probably going to take years. It might even get canceled before you, you know, anything happened. I'm like, I don't care. Let's just work. And you know what? If it gets canceled, so be it. Uh, I'll be so good that some other big show will take me. <laughs> nice. So I worked. Star and Trek they worked. Just four seasons. <laughs> Pardon me? The Star Trek's get at least four seasons. There's no, there's no canceling. True, but I mean, you never know, right? Like, yeah. the thing about acting, a lot, a lot of people don't get how hard this is. Like, one of my teachers uh, said something back in film school that that just really resonated with me. Um, he said that you're, you have to be a little bit insane to be an actor because imagine every audition you go to is a job interview and you are you're purposefully going to a, like a ton of job interviews only to be rejected most of the time it's to 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 get a proper by the way a proper audition is already winning a lottery <laughs> getting an audition in a big show that's like winning the like the jackpot of a lottery but that's just an addition <laughs> then there's actually getting the role which is like winning the uh, winning the lottery again mm. that's like that's just how it is um like i last just to give you perspective last year i i auditioned over 230 times wow you know like i i didn't even book 20 times you know like I, that's just how this industry is mm. Um, so it took me and my agents two and a half years of hard work, uh, refocusing, training, uh, you know, spending a lot of money on, on better headshots, better demo reel, better everything. I actually like hired the top demo reel editor in all of Canada. Hmm. Like this is Colin Mockery's demo editor. Uh, who was like, what are you doing? Like, who are you? <laughs> no, David, David's great. He, he was like, I, you have barely anything that's usable, but you know what? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I will help you out. And he did like, he made me this killer first demo reel that have, you know, has been updated over and over again, but Leia, like we did all these things and it took two and a half years to get one edition and I didn't get the role, obviously. Uh, and it took, discovery? and then what, an, an, pardon? 
on discovery yeah it was it was it was my first audition for discovery took two and a half years to get Mm. and then it took another year before i auditioned again for discovery Mm. um what was the first role i can't i can't say can't say i'm nda on that i'm nda on everything so uh, there's i can only really talk about what interview over yeah Yeah. no dirt no hey i already told you about the Long and the crotch hole. Okay, That's you got true. more, that was more than I was expecting to get. Got a hot take already. No, I was going to say the um, the process you're describing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it, it, thank you for that. It's really interesting to to mm. get a sense of the sort of behind the scenes view of the working actor's life because I think a lot of us don't really know how that works. But all of a sudden, it flashed on my mind. You know. The amount of time you're putting in and working in a very deliberate and directed fashion toward getting a particular audition, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it may be that you're really working at. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to work in, in in academia, and it can take that long or longer, particularly if you're in the sciences field, as you as you well know, I'm sure, to get an article published. Mm-hmm. So there's 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 a sense of real um, I guess what I'm saying is I think a lot of us wonder about the actor's life and think, okay, well, you kind of do some stuff, you get some gigs, you do some work, there you go. It's, you know, it's, uh, but the amount of commitment that I'm hearing in your story to pursuing this goal, uh, yeah, I just, it, 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 it really struck me. Certainly something that's common through the arts, too. I mean, me and Dave have played music in front of zero to ten people far too many times. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's like, don't worry, the audience is getting bigger. Sometimes the audience never gets bigger. But, you know, sometimes it does. But doing it's worth it when when you're really in love with the, the practice, you know? Yep. Oh, I thought you were going to say your bandmate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the equivalent of what you're describing to me is just the sheer amount of stuff I've done for free. Just to mm. attempt to get some kind of material to be usable in a demo and to get something on a resume. The sheer amount of stuff oh, I've done artist that is unusable. Exposure. Oh, yeah. All the time. Oh, but like let me put it this way like okay there are a lot of as a union actor for example i'm allowed to do non-union student films uh made by students in programs at certain universities like ryerson or sheridan and uh i mean they're not going to pay us and we know that but it's like a shared thing where we elevate we as union members elevate their their films and they give us material Right. There's no pay, and I did quite a few of them, and most of them never got released. So, <laughs> uh, and then a lot of them, I don't, I would never, I would, no offense to any of the people who did it, I can't, like, I can never use because there are problems like sound issues, uh, lighting issues, like, it just looks bad on my demo as a professional. So, and it's, it's tragic because some of those films are really good. Like the, the writing is good. The directing is good, but they just don't have the skills nor the money to make it any better. Right. Yeah. Right. And the technical side is the worst. <laughs> the so, difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, I honestly think if you look at the amount of work I've done in my 16 years versus how much money I made, <laughs> I've worked well, like even now, I, 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 if you just like divide it all up, I've made less than minimum wage at acting. Oh, yeah. For so you want to be an artist. <laughs> yep. And I, I, I'm a realtor, <laughs> right? Outside of that. And that's where I make oh, yeah. the bulk of my money to, 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 you know, feed my family, keep a roof over our heads and, and to fund all the work I do for acting, you know, cause right. I still have to train. A lot of people don't know that. Like we don't ever stop training. We don't ever stop learning. There is no such thing as being done 
as an artist you have to keep improving yourself yeah. and you know with so much downtime between gigs for all, most of us like everyone sees celebrities right but no one really sees the rest of us the rest of us don't work that much so we have to we have to stay fresh we have to you know keep stay on our toes and and the only way to do that is to to pay for it um so yeah like it i need i need a joe job as we call it just to just to keep this going right yep yeah it's how we can fund all these high quality podcasts that we do <laughs> and i'm in <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs> That's oh, my yeah. career. <laughs> well, I'm proud of you. Like I'm not. There's yeah, no man. bitterness. I'm not upset. Like I'm. <laughs> I'm happy. I go to like. I go to your I memory the... alpha page. And I go. Michael. Michael, less than minimum wage, Chan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By God, he's done it. But I mean, it. It. it um... You make a good point about the value we're actually deriving from these practices, right? And clearly, the value you get from learning, from doing the acting, from from just, I mean, the way you were describing being on stage with people who are uh, acting as catalysts to draw out uh, things in your own ability to perform that you may not even have Correct. have seen before, you know? Uh, yeah, there's a huge amount of value there that, I mean, while unfortunately not monetary, uh, I can see that you're, you have a pretty deep appreciation for it, it seems to me. I do. Hmm. And the other thing I'd, I'd like to mention about the art, at least, is that it's not just acting, like a production whether it's film, television, I'm sure you guys are musicians and you you know what I'm about to talk about, but it's it's the collaborative nature of it, you know. Oh, yeah. The more able to collaborate and to draw in and give as 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 an artist, whether it's not just acting, like as anyone behind the camera, right? The more you're able to do that, the the, the take and give uh the better it is not just for yourself but for everyone and and that's how you get a production like like discovery look how beautiful that is you know look look how how great the, the writing the acting all of that is this is like season four is a mind-blowing season if you really compare it looks better than the freaking movies and it's no offense acted better too <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, that's right. We're we're better than you guys, Kelvin. <laughs> um, no, I, I love the Kelvin universe too. Um, but but uh, in all seriousness, it is a beautiful, amazing, incredible season. And you know, it's just like the only way this could have been pulled off is as a team. You know, any any artist, any part of this team that is selfish ruins everything, right? So. That's the way it is. And for me, the it's the art itself of acting, what I what I the passion I have for it isn't just personal. It's 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 the whole process, you know, it's being part of a community, being a part of a whole, being part of this beautiful machine, working together towards a common goal to put out something for the rest of the world to see. That's what I love about this. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Right on. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Well said. Well said. There's a baby crying above my head. Tell us, <laughs> oh, you have a, you have a horror podcast. Tell us about that. Oh yeah. So uh, I am the co-host of the Hellbound podcast. My co-host is Alexander Blackburn. He's from the UK. He is a phenomenal <laughs> filmmaker and editor and producer, and um, he's also the founder of the Hellbound. Uh, uh, film festival horror film festival uh i'm a producer on that festival as well and uh so that, we pardon me an online fest is that an online it is or? it is an online festival uh this year will be our second year doing it uh it was born out of the pandemic and uh but we are going seem to have been 
Yeah. This podcast but now we're being gonna, one of them. <laughs> yeah. But we are going to continue forward with this festival. Our hope is to continue doing this year after year after year. And then, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe one day we go from an online festival to actually having a theater somewhere mm. in the UK. Like, I won't physically be there, but I know he he has a team over there that can then, you know, get that set up. Um, but the podcast is an extension. Well, originally was an extension of the festival, but now it's its own thing. So we talk about anything horror, not just not just films. Like there's an episode I literally talk about an ad I got on Facebook for these weird like bodybuilding bird statue toys that you can buy off of Subway Mart, which is like a Japanese import store. Ooh. Like that is horrifying. You, if you ever look this stuff up, just look up but like bodybuilding Pokemon and bodybuilding. I, I don't know. People have a weird obsession of these things, but that <laughs> like we talk about everything horror. Um, and we release wow. an episode every single Wednesday uh it's it's just a fun you know it's a fun show and we recommend stuff for people to watch people to read people to to get into with horror uh we try to mix uh that with like reviewing stuff that's out now new things so uh but without spoilers and uh yeah, one I of the things they spider-man no way home on my x-men podcast oh jeez. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? I've had so many spoilers Noob. for stuff recently, it pisses me off. But, um, <laughs> yeah, and one of the things they evolved uh, out of that podcast, and I I really lo- want to talk about this because it's so cool, is like, because uh, we're both very busy, and there was a short period near the beginning of our podcast where uh, I couldn't be on an episode. And so uh, Alex and his wife, Vicky, uh, ended up co-hosting one episode but i was like well how how can we keep me on the show without me being on the show i was like okay uh maybe i'm just gonna do a cute little voicemail you know recording so i recorded like a little little thing about me being attacked by my doppelgangers <laughs> so it's like i'm calling him like alex help me oh my god <laughs> right and i just sent it to him like yeah I'll play this before the episode, like as an intro. It's like a minute. And then the next episode was uh, we agreed to for him to take a week off. And then so my wife, Jessica, and I ended up co-hosting a show. And then he sent, well, he, sorry, he didn't send me. He uh, recorded himself doing like a voicemail to keep him on the show. And then next thing I know, I'm like, hey, dude, I have this crazy idea to continue the storyline that we already started with uh with our two voicemails plus a a something that started on episode one was me joking about how many michael chans there are on this planet and how in reality they're all just doppelgangers of me and it doesn't matter what they look like they're just me <laughs> all of them and i'm gonna kill them all because i'm the only michael chan there can only uh, be the one. real michael chan um so so that started what is now like our radio drama intros every single episode has a one to three minute voice acted thing of a bobby at the beginning and it's a continuing story the whole hogan uh, and we have guests, the floor laughing we have guest <laughs> uh voiceover people like we had a female michael chan played by katisha shaw uh, we we have a well monster played by uh, Oshini, and it's just it's great, and and we're gonna get more and more people to to guest on the show. Uh, but yeah, like it, we're on a worldwide adventure to fight all the Michael Chan doppelgangers. Although, mind you, the last few weeks has been crazy, so we didn't really have, like, a drama drama. Instead, we've been doing, like, uh, segments with different types of Michael Chans coming on and, like, talking about how they're going to kill me. (laughs) Is that the Hulk Hogan one? Oh, yeah, the werewolf. uh, The werewolves, I I don't know why. They're all improvised. I improvise all of these. Like, I, I don't there's no script for these things uh unlike the drama parts and yeah i I just turned on my mic i'm like i'm a werewolf here goes and within like one sentence i'm like oh oh crap this is hulk hogan 
All right. I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> it was it was very funny, though. It's like, look, brother. Let me tell you, brother. Brother. I'll tell you right now, brother. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, though, that you guys start your show off with little improvs, because that's how we've always ended our shows, our regular Locutors of Trek podcast. That's right. An improvised scene that continues. And we, we break it down. Into yeah, the misadventures of our, like, our bumbling musical... Our, uh, uh, yeah, personalities, I guess. Yeah. The plain, simple tailors, yeah. That's right. <laughs> so those are always fun. We just left Deep Space Nine because they didn't appreciate us. Yeah. Got a Volume one, underappreciation station. Right? Like, how did you even get that microphone on? The, like, you just ruined <laughs> the whole aesthetic. The architect must be pissed <laughs> off. You guys stuck the that on It's though. gorgeous. <laughs> no, hey, I, I don't disagree. I Amazing. think it looks great. <laughs> But you ruined what they originally intended for this space station. Like, how did Let you even you. get that onto there? Did you like warp it in? It it certainly it, does resist the bounds of you know Cardassian minimalism. You know, as a as a as an architect. In the feedback yeah. that comes off that thing when the wormhole opens. Oh goodness me! Good. Is that how you defeated Not the Dominion good. using that? <laughs> I just hide this. Who says we like, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fluid yeah, I like, like your horror awesome. podcast. I listened to a few episodes of it actually. I like it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh man, our our uh, our next episode is just like uh, Alex got busy again, so it's uh, it'll be Jessica and myself. And yeah, <laughs> it's my wife and I have a very fun, weird, dorky dynamic. So <laughs> hope you guys like that. Hey, we, uh, Jessica Chan and I have worked together on the podcast. On yes, the yes, you podcast. guys have. Yeah. So you know exactly what she's like. Yeah, absolutely. A fine podcaster. So I, I want to give a little shout out to my wife. Um, so everyone, like, I'm the actor. I'm the one in the industry. Hell, I'm the one in Star Trek. But here's the funny thing about my, my wife. Uh, she knows more about the industry, more about, you know, like she knows more about media in general than i do she knows more about trek than i do and i've I've been a trekking my entire life but the knowledge she has of media is insane the amount of actors directors composers that she she knows i i have i'm terrible with names like uh, you show me a picture i'm like yeah that guy did that movie what's his name i don't know oh that (laughs) i'm terrible by the way horrible uh and same with actors i'm like yeah the, the dude in this or that or, you know the lady in that but I, name uh she can quote stuff like a lot of stuff and her and her entire family my like when i go and eat dinner with my in-laws it's just like quote fest and myself and some of the other uh non flowets are just sitting there like did you get that no not no. Hey, we're in the same club. We don't know what is going on, club. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm an actor. That's funny. Go figure. But it's great. It's great having her because then she could be like, if I ever go, if I ever get big enough to go to parties, I have to bring her. I'm like, who is that? <laughs> it's Martin Scorsese, oh, yeah. honey. Oh, who? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. And, and what do I know him for? That's right. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, dead fair. The name rings a bell, Where do I but... know that name? You worked with him. Oh. <laughs> you ever seen a gangster movie? No. <laughs> yeah, she's just Jessica is amazing. She's just I'm so lucky to have her in my life, and uh, she's my reader for all of my self tape, like home self taped editions, mm-hmm. and just to. It's just the sheer amount of, of voices she can pull off and the emotions behind them. Like, it's incredible. And she's not an actor. I mean, she has developed a love for voice acting, so she's going to pursue it as a non-union voice actor. But, oh, my God. Like, I, I can't ask for a... Outside of Katisha Shaw, my best friend, like, Jess, Jess is, is it. And 
because you know cat is not from around here uh i can't use her you know a lot because like a live reader is sounds way better sure but jessica gets me booked <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> like she's that good sometimes i like hope that a casting director will be like it's michael chance good but who's that who's that who's that reader <laughs> wow the range of emotions on on her check out the voice acting talents of michael and jessica chan on star trek radio theater over at live long and podcast <laughs> more ads nice hey you know <laughs> i gotta gotta do what i gotta do i'm not gonna pay for any ads so we, we do it on the x-men podcast too we advertise for everybody for free and eventually <laughs> probably nothing will happen <laughs> <laughs> we do it anyway well geez you got anything else for michael chan here dave well my the the the, the final thing uh, i think for me is because you know we've we've sort of pursued some of our own questions we're interested in for you and that sort of thing but what is it that people don't ask you about that they should know about you or that you'd like to be able to have a chance to talk about? When, when I'm being interviewed about uh, stuff like Star Trek and then prior to this stuff like being on Mayday and all that, something that I'm very passionate about is diversity and equality. Mm -hmm uh not just when it comes to to uh race but also when it comes to things like lgbtq plus representation uh representation uh for people with uh, uh disabilities mm -hmm. um i am uh a very active member of uh my union's uh diversity and inclusion committee and i am also part of the newly formed out actra to which is uh the Toronto uh, LGBTQ plus uh, committee for my union that split off from the the diversity and inclusion committee because just, you can't do too much, you know. You know what I'm saying? It used to be just one committee trying to represent everybody, and it's so hard. So now there's like out actra to it's its own thing. Um, I'm very passionate about this stuff, and a lot of people don't know this. Like I've been interviewed on CBC. CTV, mm -hmm. CB24, oh, for these specific things in relation to both uh, the industry. Because I'm very passionate, ju not just about on-screen representation, I want it behind the camera as well. Mm -hmm. Because for authentic stories to be told, you can't just put the people from the different uh, stories that you want to tell in front of the camera. If everyone in the back is white, like, what, what are you yeah. really telling <laughs> you need to have enough diversity to allow for the different voices to be able to come through and have checks and balances so that let's say a director is white for an episode about chinatown that's fine okay. i'm no problem with it but you need people behind the camera who are also chinese to be able to help them to to understand the significance of many of the different aspects of of chinese culture that's just the way it is Sure. Uh, so the more diversity and inclusion you have on, on, in every regard, behind the camera and in front of the camera, the more authentic you can get with all the different stories so that everyone can help each other tell each other's stories. I know there's a lot of push for like, one group has to tell their stories and this group has to tell their story. It's great. That's great. But if it is a very big industry and a very collaborative industry. And what you're going to find is you can't just have one group of people make, let's say an episode of a show about, again, let's say China. You can't just have all Chinese people. That's just impossible working on that episode. It's going to have to be everyone. <laughs> so you have to have enough on both ends to get something that, you know, a more is more able to represent the Chinese culture and the Chinese aspect of that episode better. Yeah, you don't want so to that's something that I, I don't often get. I know a lot of people ask me, it's like, what is your experience 
mm-hmm. like I get asked that like as as an Asian uh, East Asian actor and you know I could talk about all the racism I faced all the people that told me I can do it but and, and but nobody really talks about stuff outside of that like my experience is one thing I, I just think it's important now not only to talk about personal experience about talk about what we can do as a community mm. to make things better for everyone wow that's really lovely mm-hmm. thank you yeah it's a geez why don't we end it on that note sure it's very star trek-esque indeed yeah well well uh, uh lieutenant michael chan thank you so much for joining us it's been lovely to meet you uh great to meet you guys too chance to talk again sometime you know oh you know I, w- I would love to be on here again as a stepping stone to get onto one of the the, the Super Mater Brothers shows, of course, of course, you know, get your foot in the door, right? <laughs> Put in a good word for me if you ever <laughs> meet those guys. Well, duck to the bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you're always welcome back for debates or discussions or whatever you want to join us for. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I would love that. Right on. Yeah, we have we have a lot of things over here. But like you said, check out Super Mater Brothers. Check out Live Long Podcast. Check out my other podcast, X Rated, the X Men Animated Show, and my co-host Andre's podcast, the Graphic Histories Podcast, mm-hmm. and the Hellbound Podcast. Yes, please. The hosted Hellbound by Michael podcast. Chan and Alex Blackburn. Yeah, yeah. Check that out. It's a good podcast. Trust me. Let's do it. Thank you. It's good. Yeah. All right. Well. Well, hey. for now. End transmission. <laughs>